The Living Memorial is the largest exhibit on Auschwitz ever presented in the United States. It's officially opening next Wednesday. And here to give us more insight into what's featured in the exhibit is chair of the board of the Museum of Jewish Heritage. Bruce Ratner. Bruce, thank you so much for thank being you for here. Me, Alex. Uh, so it is so emotional to see this, and I know it personally yes. touches you as well. We'll get to that in a second. But I understand that you first saw this in Spain and decided that you wanted to bring it to our country. A little over a year ago, uh, I was told about this exhibit, and uh, I flew over to Spain. I met the people who had initiated the exhibit, um, a fellow named Luis Ferrero from a company called Musalia. I looked at the exhibit, and I realized this had to be here. It had to be in New York City. It impacted me in an extraordinary way. I went with a friend, Abe Foxman, um, who was head of the Anti-Defamation League formerly, um, and when we finished, we were in tears. Um, it has a huge impact on me, and I think on everyone who will see it. What are some of the items that will be featured here that have never before been seen? Well, in a way, it starts with what's outside. And outside, there's a freight car, some call it even a cattle car, that Jews were put in, um, 100 to 150 people per car, standing up because there was no room to sit, sometimes for three or four days with just a bucket full of water, um, no food unless what they were able to bring some. And for three or four days in complete darkness, they were shipped. They thought they were going to a work camp. And in fact, they wound up in Auschwitz, and they were 90% killed. And why do you feel, uh, especially now, that this is so important to showcase? Well, if we look at what's happening in the world, anti-Semitism is in the rise, not only in the world, but here in the city and in this country. We've had two incredibly horrible incidents in the last six months, one six months ago in Pittsburgh, and then this last week um, in San Diego or near San Diego. It's not only anti-Semitism, but it's hate and discrimination around the world. Um, we have more refugees today than after the First World War, 40 million of people from every country almost have, there are some refugees. And so now when we have a rise of hate, discrimination, anti-Semitism, we need to understand how it came about and what it can cause, that the ultimate aspect of hate is often violence. And, and you talk about how personal and how it can cause such pain and grief in a family. You can relate to that personally. I can. Um, I wasn't, well, I was born actually a few days before the liberation of Auschwitz, actually. Um, and I had over 40 relatives who died in Auschwitz. And in fact, I remember seeing in my genealogy there was a little girl who was three years old, oh. um, uh, who would have been th my cousin, um, and three years older than I was, um, that I never got to see. And she never got to see me. And she never got to see a world. Her life was cut short. I mean, these are real stories, and people real need stories. to understand that and connect. And I think that's really poignant. There's an artifact that stood out to you, and this may be something that relates to a young, a young girl as well. It was um, a pair of shoes, or rather one shoe, one shoe with a sock still in it. Oh. Um, and you can see it in the picture. And what is that? It obviously it was a little boy or a little girl who thought they were, had to take their shoes off to take a shower and left the shoe there thinking they were going to come back, putting the sock back just like they were taught. And instead they were led to the gas chamber and died. Um, and so that shoe has some meaning. A little boy wore that. He Parents bought it for him, a little girl. Um, and and he learned to make sure to do things exactly the right way. Unfortunately, he never returned. It's heartbreaking as a mother when you see stuff like this. And, and the stories, while it happened so long ago, can still so powerfully affect you. Uh, let's talk about, we saw some of the survivors in a story that Steve Overmeyer did. There aren't many left to tell these tales. No, the sad part of it is there weren't many survivors, first of all. Only 90% of the people who went to Auschwitz died. Over six million Jews and over a million and a half children. So there weren't many survivors, maybe two, three hundred thousand in this area of the country. Um, and so there are very, there, there are, most of them are in their 80s and 90s. There are very few left, but that live testimony is so important. You know, our major goal is to educate young people. And you saw the video before of a children being educated by a survivor. You saw their eyes and how they listened, because it is, is nothing like live testimony and actually hearing from somebody who went through this. It's very sad, um, and um, it's important sometimes to confront the evil of the world yeah. to understand the world. Yeah. What is the one takeaway that you hope people have? I think there's really two takeaways. One is that hate and discrimination 
wind up very often causing something like hap that happened at Auschwitz. And the second is about indifference and bystanders. What made this really happen was the indifference and bystanders who didn't do anything because the Nazis could not have done this themselves. It's the indifference of people around them, German citizens who allowed it to happen, neighboring country citizens who allowed it to happen, who just stood by, even people in our own country um, who could have done things to help and did not. And where can people get tickets and how much are they? Tickets are $12 um, and you go to www.auschwitz.nyc. Thank you so much Thank for you very much, Alice. Thank you for doing well. this. We appreciate